like it was like a kid like energy about this. I feel mm. like um it's meant to be like us connecting on some level, like even mm. just to learn. I feel like I've already learned a lot. Mm. Like and just knowing like how your daily habits and pa- practices are. I feel like um like empowered, like inspired, oh, like awesome. it's for a reason. And this yeah. morning I felt like I didn't want to go. This is this is like how mm. I've, I've been my whole life. Like <laughs> I, I like I'm avoidant. And but like when I do push myself and just do it, all these good things come from it and stuff like mm. that. So like I just I know I can't stay home. I need to. Do, and I had this really good feeling coming here, <gasps> but I also like the nerves. I want to stay home, but then that's my past self. I need to oh, if I'm yeah. scared, it's like a good thing. Oh. I, I'm not gonna cancel. That's 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 old me. Like oh. it's gonna push in and do things that make me uncomfortable because that's how you change, that's how you learn. Yes. Like I used to think that I loved myself and I loved my life and I was having fun, but I did end up kind of like straying away from my friends yes. because like, yeah. no, I can't really relate to them. Yes. Our foundation was partying. Yes, exactly. We're oh. the only ones left. If you want to know the affirmation for gray hair. That's been the yeah. hard, like one of the hardest things for me though because I always would want to change my parents or change this or that. I control the situation so I'm not uncomfortable, but that's just mm. not how life works. The more you become aware of that, it's like the more free you can be. Like, yes. you free yourself from all that responsibility of, oh, I have to change everyone. Yes. I have to make everyone make me feel comfortable. Yes. You have to have your own pod of comfort for yourself. And when you like, set up that space for yourself, then you attract more of that to you, I believe. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for coming to view this episode. This is actually the first interview that I recorded, so it's a little bit awkward and unpracticed at times. Um, But it was a fun conversation. Um, Like the thumbnail says, we want to free ourselves from the need to control. And there's a baby and we can't control the baby. So, <laughs> baby's gonna cry when the baby's gonna cry. Um, so yeah, I um, just to make for a more pleasant viewing experience for you guys, I did a little chopping, so you might notice that. As for the topic of discussion, we got a lot into spiritual awakening and growth and discussing our daily practices um, and our personal experiences with all that stuff and Emily asked me a bunch of questions too so you'll get to find out more about me in this episode (laughs) Um, another thing is that this is the first episode of my podcast that is sponsored so that message will be next make sure you stick through it to get to the episode and I hope you enjoy watching thanks for coming (laughs) Emily and I had a picnic I like to invite my guests to join me for a sponsored lunch if I can find a local eatery who I want to support, and is also willing to support my growing podcast. I am grateful to Abby, the owner of Gray's Catering, for graciously helping me in being our first sponsor. Gray's is located in Chelmsford Town Center, right on the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail bike path. Check out her business hours and plan a picnic with a platter or stop in for a Sammy. Our platter was incredibly satisfying. Abby supplies everything you'll need for the perfect picnic, including big brand alternative beverages and other fun additions for your platter supplied by local small businesses. So plan a day to go visit Abby's shop and make sure you tell her we sent you. I'd like to welcome on my show my first guest. Um, This is a person I've met recently and she has just kind of pulled me in with her 
warm, calming vibe. And I just feel really comfortable in like getting to know her so far. And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of nervous. So thank much. you, Kim. I know. <laughs> same. No, same. No, thank you so much, Kim, for having me. I really yeah. ap appreciate being here. And I feel the exact same way about you. Like, um, mm. you're just somebody who just instantly. I feel connected to some people. Oh, it's kind of rare. Yeah. You very warming, non-judgment, non-judgmental mm -hmm. energy about you. Yeah. So I'm glad we met. Me Let's too. Pass. Yeah. So this is Emily, and um, yeah, I feel like we've been kind of like gravitating towards each other like over the past few months since we met like last summer. I think like last June. I think is kind of when we started like paying attention to each other and noticing each other um and I think maybe it had like a little bit to do with like the rainbow paintings I was doing yes. or like it was that was kind of like the point where we started connecting on so I want to ask you um what kind of like what made you like drawn to like what I was doing with with that so that's so interesting that you asked me that because I think about that a lot actually because that is like I feel like that is our connecting point mm. like so pretty much I was the past year I've been trying I've been kind of cocooning myself trying to figure out who I am and Pride Month came along and seeing you post about like these rainbow paintings and just being so open about it and mm. displaying them like kind of for public and like public people like everyone was kind of getting them and loving them. It felt like just like a, such an open like space. It like drew me to like go into that room to actually get a rainbow. Like I specifically went there like so I could look for the rainbow like with my toddler. Aww. And like it just felt like I felt very drawn to like just the openness about it. Like I never really seen that before coming from like a small town and having like I never really seen anything so open with like kind of Gay Pride Month and mm. and being a place that I knew and liked. And I felt like oh, let me let me. Go there and look for the rainbow, and then it kind of like drew me in. I, that whole month, it, I, I was like excited to go, oh. and I got a uh, one of your rainbows, and it's hanging up in my son's room now. Oh. We love it. Oh. So it kind of like opened me up to, um, yeah, finding like a, a safe community, like a really welcoming community, and like you were the one kind of hosting that, and mm. and that, that I think about that all the time actually. How that rainbow and like you having that rainbows of the mm. month during Pride Month is what really brought me in Aww. and like felt connected to you I guess because you were so open sharing that with like everyone who you know the town and mm -hmm. it felt so nice yeah. to see that that's awesome so what is what is special to you about like first of all just like the rainbow specifically or is it mostly because like it's associated with pride yeah, I think associated with pride, I love rainbows in general, but mm -hmm. like um, I identify now as queer and the, maybe the past year and a half I've really felt o okay saying that and like mm -hmm. like comfortable saying that, but growing up I I never really understood myself or like didn't, definitely didn't like express myself kind of like because of the household I was in and like mm -hmm. the point of views and stuff like that. So I just never really felt I knew myself fully mm -hmm. or was able to really just... Um, be comfortable saying that word and like kind of identifying with something other than like what maybe like my parents would expect of me mm -hmm. so I guess rainbows they really feel special to me because it feels like I can finally wear it like kind of um, feel connected to them without hiding mm -hmm. nice yeah do you feel comfortable like getting more a little more into your background or like Maybe like specifically how you identify as queer or like also how like your family life affected um, how you could um, express yourself like in the past and then versus that versus how you express yourself now. Yeah, sure. Um, so I wouldn't say my parents are like homophobic. I just think they're kind mm -hmm. of closed minded and like grew up very small town conservative and mm -hmm. um just didn't really have any experiences, not really open, as open for experiences. So kind of growing up and just hearing maybe like subconscious stigma about, um, you know, certain sexualities, mm -hmm. um, specifically for my father, mm -hmm. it just kind of 
always made me kind of be quiet about who I was. I always knew I had like feelings specifically for women, um, but it just wasn't something that would ever really be talked about in the family. Mm -hmm. I did actually going to my dad picked me up from Pride when I was in high school mm -hmm. in Boston, and he I did kind of come out to him then, but mm -hmm. it was he brushed it aside as if like, oh, come on, like, this is just a phase. And it really shut me down to him oh, at that point. Yeah. Um, so I guess I just never really, I just never really fully felt comfortable in my home. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess in general, just having a lot more confidence that I do today, I can kind of feel more comfortable being myself mm -hmm. with sexuality or like in any aspect of my life around my parents really um i'm not sure i probably didn't even answer that question fully <laughs> well that was good um so you're are you married now yes yeah you're married to a man yeah right? married to a man <laughs> i think that is also another hard kind of weird thing that like i kind of seem straight because i'm married to a man like we have like a typical hetero looking relationship okay. and you know it's um monogamous relationship but it's Still, I still identify as queer, really is just open to anybody just connecting with their soul, not mm -hmm. the, not the looks, really. Yeah. So, but it is, um, kind of a interesting and kind of odd place, because it's like, I kind of look straight in a way, like, mm -hmm. in my relationship, but I don't identify or feel straight at all. Mm hmm So it's, yeah, trying to figure out how to express that is... Yeah working on mm -hmm. yeah I would say like I don't know if I'll get like a lot into my specific experience in this conversation but I kind of had I would say I had a similar experience um, with like a coming out situation and it was also like to a parent to my mom and I feel like I almost got like the same reaction like it was just kind of like a full denial of what I was coming out with and yes it just yeah it was really like it was more about the person reacting to me than it was about me I, I yes. feel like in my experience at least but um yeah I, I even though it hurt me to um experience that kind of like rejection and like um what was the word I said? Um, like, just denial. Um, it was definitely more like, um, like, blocks and, like, things, like, not allowed by that person and not, like, necessarily anything to do with me. Because yes. I am who I am, and that's, like, the reality for me, and that's not going to change. So... I love that you said that because it is true. It's about them, not really about you. Yeah. And how is how have you how are things now? So I feel like for me at this time, I'm kind of back in a place of learning more about myself and what I want, and I'm not totally secure in that at this time. So I feel like I'm kind of in like a exploratory phase. Like I need to, I need some more experiences to figure out what I, um, what I really want right now. Yep, I feel like yeah. that's yeah, that's completely understandable, and that, like that's everyone in some aspect, you know, yeah. like new time and experiences mm -hmm. to figure out. It's a lot to figure out. Mm -hmm. But your mom has kind of oh, is your mom a little more open these days? I think she's open. I, I think so. Like I said, I probably won't get like too specific into it because it's it's not for me. It's not really like I don't know. It's not really even as simple as like saying I'm gay or something like that. But I feel like there's a lot of spiritual and um, like learned reasons for like how I came out. Um, like what I came out as or whatever um and I'm still like at this point like that those things might have changed and 
Um, yeah, so I kind of just need to... Sorry, what did you ask me again? How are the, um, like, is your mom more excited? Like, more oh, accepting? is she more open, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, she's, she's very open. Like, I, and I understand, like, why what I came out with to her was very, like, pretty shocking for... I think it would be shocking for anyone to hear. <laughs> I might get more into this kind of stuff, like, in other episodes yeah, of, yes, of yes. my show. <laughs> so... But yeah, no, my mom is like, is pretty open, I think, at this yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like having children like us, like, it really helps, like, open them up. But I feel like without mm -hmm. us, they wouldn't be, like, changing and evolving a little bit. Yeah. They kind I, of need somebody to push them sometimes or show them new ways. Yep, and I feel like that's a huge way, like, society as a whole evolves. Like, like... We're not going to evolve as a society without, like, the middle generation, like, pulling the older ones yes, along absolutely. and, like, bringing them into the future. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yes. It definitely. I think it all is very important linking. And then the next generation will be the, yeah, it'll continue on. Mm-hmm. It's always something to learn and grow. So we're talking about your family life. You have some siblings, right? <laughs> yes. I have three <laughs> sisters. How is it growing up with sisters? <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I don't know anything different, but it was it was awesome. But um, just um, always somebody there, never a second in privacy. Oh <laughs> so yeah, it was just it was a lot. We're all one eight, one year apart, except for the youngest, who's a few years after. So very similar friend group too. So we just were all kind of together quite a bit. Yeah. Wow. So it's like built-in friends almost. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's kind of cool. See, my mom has is one of four sisters oh, and wow. they also had two brothers so from them i kind of get like because i don't have any sisters i have a younger brother and i have an older half brother oh wow okay yeah and um all right we'll see if he's at all sometimes he just needs like hmm. like stimulation looking at him talking to him so i don't know we'll see if this will work i'm sorry it's okay it's okay um so yeah, my mom with her sisters, just the, from watching that, I don't know, it seems like they kind of have like a delicate balance to maintain and uh, there's always the potential for some drama or <laughs> like yes, I, somebody yes. saying the wrong thing and pissing everyone off and <clears throat> or pissing one per sister off and like then you, it's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as kids, we got into a lot of fights. Now, as adults, we're more friends than anything. Oh, that's nice. That's there is, nice. of course, some drama because, you know, there's differences in personalities. But mm -hmm. uh, three of us are very, very, very similar mindset. But there's one that is kind of uh, a little bit different than us. So there is, like, some clashing. Mm, yeah. But in general, it's it's definitely smoothed out over the years. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I feel like that's, like, growing in relationships with anyone and family it's like you know kind of I guess it depends on like how far you're willing to go away from your family about like you're kind of like you're stuck dealing with who you've got <laughs> as a family so exactly you kind of, kind of have to make it work or you know um compromise and all that good stuff <laughs> definitely I wish yeah it can, isn't easy sometimes but yeah it's a skill to learn mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does uh how does your marriage relationship compare to like like sisterly relationships? <laughs> That's a good question. So I mean my husband is one of my best friends, so I feel like I have a very, very close friendship with him like I do with my sisters. Um <laughs> so um I feel like he's kind of just an extended friend almost. So, and he gets along very, very well with my sisters and family, which oh. is which is nice. Nice, awesome. <laughs> As a learning and evolving human and a woman, how has your perspective evolved over the course of your lifetime, so far, and how much has it changed recently, say in the past three years, in comparison to? overall perspective so i think my perspective has drastically changed overall the past three years like 
specifically the past, yeah, three, yeah, three years actually, um, <laughs> pretty much since having children, getting pregnant, um, like my entire life has changed in perspective. I was really, really focused on career, 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 mm-hmm. working crazy, I was doing my PhD, just around the clock hours, and like I, crippling anxiety, I was thinking the other day mm-hmm. how I used to have migraines all the time, but I was just trying to get get to where I wanted, like, career-wise, and that was really the only focus in my life for many years, um, and not really, um, taking care of anything else, but focusing on, like, accomplishing something, I guess. Once I had kids, I was gonna put my PhD on hold for three months and then go back, and, like, everything completely changed, my whole perspective on what's important really changed, and, um... I began, like, really just, like, a a self-love journey over the Mm. past three years and opening up that chapter of my life because seeing that, like, um, I was trying so hard to have, like, some big dream goals, like, kind of career-wise, but I was having a lot of anxiety and not happy and, like, at peace with myself. Mm -hmm. So as I had kids and um, I just had back-to-back boys and, like what I wanted for them made me kind of like look into myself and what I wanted for myself and it was completely opposite really of what I was like trying to strive for really Mm -hmm. so I just been trying to figure out what I want in life I'm still figuring that out but really just working on like um time with myself time with my boys outdoors like the little things in life glimmers in life and things that bring me joy rather like I've never felt this like stress-free and at peace just focusing on like small things compared to like, trying to focus on like the, a huge picture of getting somewhere so it definitely has changed like pretty drastically yeah <laughs> uh, i don't know anything about babies really. yeah, he just, yeah he likes to like can't play with stuff uh, <laughs> and i hadn't i knew nothing about babies at all like i never even held one and like maybe oh, once wow. when i was like a little kid but <laughs> That was going to be one of my questions, so, like, it has, um, being a mother something that you've always, like, looked forward to that you really wanted to do sometime in this life? Not, like, no, it was never on my forefront. It was, um, always something I thought, like, I could, I would might like to do, but it was, like, um, whoever I, like, settled down with, whatever their viewpoints were, I could go either way. Mm. I really, I didn't really have like, a very strong drive to be a mother. As I, like, got into my 30s, though, like, I actually started getting, like, a stronger drive to, like, mm. to have children. I think, mm. like, I felt so secure in my relationship, and mm. um, I the feelings kind of evolved a little bit, but I never really had a really strong drive to be a mother. Mm. But as it happened, I was, like, this is the best. Like, this oh. is what I, like, right now is what was meant to be. It was, oh. I couldn't picture what it's like without them now. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, at first it was, you know, whatever happens and it wasn't really a major goal of mine mm-hmm. yeah I feel like I kind of could say that like I felt like I could have been that way at one point like I don't know I, I and I feel like um there's kind of a like a natural instinct like when you're like getting into your 30s yes, exactly. women like yes. you're like oh Wanted, yeah. Or like even maybe like a biological drive <laughs> that you can't control or something. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, like, yeah. Yes. Um. So. Um. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember what I was gonna say about not not having kids. I, know. <laughs> I feel like um. Yeah. At this point, like. Yeah, I guess it was kind of the same like thing. Like if like if my partner like it, whatever partner that I would end up with, like, kids, then maybe I'd be open to it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. If my husband was dead against it, then I would it would be no problem. Like it wouldn't. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah, because they were like. More money for fun, more money and for exactly, travel. Exactly, exactly, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah, there's a, you know, it just doesn't compare, you know? Like, having having a child, what is, like, the magic of having children? <laughs> I guess, like, I can't, like, the bond, like, the bond, I can't even explain, like, of giving birth to them and growing them. It's, mm-hmm. like... 
I feel like honestly it's like part of me, like an ex extension of me, like, and it made me love myself and see myself in a different light that like I feel like I have such a strong connection to them because they kind of helped, they changed me and built me to who I am. Oh yeah. And like <laughs> even just like the birthing experience for both of them, it like made me see how strong I am as like a person. It was like the most empowering, beautiful thing ever. So they like really changed me, rocked my world as they came through. They gave me strength. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, you did. Wow. Do you want to say like, anything, Hayden? I think he likes it. <laughs> what do you think? You like the oh. cat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When, so working at the cafe, like whenever I see babies come in, I like I don't know. I make faces at them, and they just they're just like, oh, you're different. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they're just taking it in. Mm. <laughs> right? You're taking it all in. Yeah, he's gonna remember you next time. Oh yeah, I think so. I can see it in his face. Aww. I know. I was thinking on the ride over here since the last time I like connected with you doing the cards and Hayden was there. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're gonna be like uh, imprinted on him a little, <laughs> <laughs> having such like uh, vulnerable conversations around him. And I think that's like, a great thing. Hey, right, buddy. High vibes. Yeah. Are you attracted to the high vibrations? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Aww. knowing, like, from such a young age, like, um, to be open and vulnerable is, like, a good thing. That's, like, what I want them to know. Because that's yeah. something I never grew up with, but it's something that's, like, so powerful, you know, mm -hmm. and important to me. Mm, nice. Yeah, so actually, yeah, one of the topics I wanted to touch on is, like, conscious parenting. Like, the concept of conscious parenting. Which I think that you were, like, really interested in. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Like, so, after becoming a parent and really figuring out, like, looking into, like, what what are some things I have to... Styles and, like, how do I address this and that. Mm -hmm. Coming upon, like, conscious or gentle parenting, it's really just about, like, just respecting them and listening to their voice mm -hmm. and attuning to their unique needs. Like, pretty much how I would want to be treated. Yeah. So it's like it's very important to me that like to have like utmost respect for them mm -hmm. and not like treat them like little kids and kind of talk mm -hmm. down to them. But like it's so common you see that constantly, mm -hmm. like especially with the older generations. Mm -hmm. um, but it's making me very intentional about how I talk every single day, mm -hmm. which is again kind of like changing the way I am. Mm -hmm. So being conscious with them is really co conscious and awareness for myself as well. Awesome. Yeah, it's all about them, right? So we are here to nurture them and just make them feel at home and welcome and like they belong in this world. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And I always think back to like how I would want to feel as a little yeah. kid and that's like kind of try to, how I try to aim to, mm -hmm. to, to parent with them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we just want to all have like feel valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I've heard people say like, when you're like you're parenting you're really at the same time parenting your own inner child like and giving your own in inner child everything that it needed at the same time like you're parenting your own children <laughs> absolutely yeah. yes I, I i completely agree with that mm -hmm. and they're, they're kind of like um hopefully i would have been down this path if, even if I didn't have kids, I think about that often. Like, I hope I kind of seen, like, what I need to do to change and, like, connect with my inner child and, like, changing mm -hmm. myself. I don't know if I, when I would have kind of gone down that path if I didn't have the kids. Yeah, that's kind of like what I was saying to you earlier about Timmy, having mm -hmm. having Timmy in my yes, life. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, almost the same thing. Like, if I didn't have Timmy, I don't think I would have been in like a quiet or calm enough space to be able to open up and like hear what else I was needing or what I was mm -hmm. missing in my life before that really what I wasn't opening up to 
Absolutely, like, picture. I really do think like a, like relationships, <laughs> pets, or anything like in your life is really like there for reasons of like a importance to it. Mm-hmm. If you're open to <laughs> open to it, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely. Okay. Also, on to a new new topic. So you kind of know that I am on an awakening spiritual path, and I did a tarot card reading for you. Ooh. So, what do you remember about that experience? <laughs> so, it was a, a great experience. It was my first reading ever, and I didn't really know too much about it. So, I've kind of just learned a little bit of the basics. Mm-hmm. Um, I, f- I still think about the cards quite a bit, because they kind of resonated with... <laughs> <I've> been... <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. They have been kind of resonating with some of the things that have been going on in my life recently. Mm. And um, I think the cards kind of really um, brought to life some of the things that I've been thinking about a lot. Um, one of the cards was like um, the the Page of Cups, like inner child playfulness and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really resonated with me because I'm doing a lot of inner child work is, is really like my... Um, my goal right now and I was really surprised when you pulled that because it kind of really hit spot on wow. with like <laughs> what I've been really practicing daily um but the reading was was really interesting a lot of information you provided me kind of um made me understand a little bit more like kind of what the cards mean and the messages mm-hmm. that could you could kind of bring to light um, I thought it was very interesting. I'm very looking forward to the next time we, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I hope I can do more events like that sometime soon. And I mean, I c- I'll read for you anytime. <laughs> yeah, the event was cool, um, though, how you had the curtain set up, like your own private space. That was so nice. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, so, it felt like so like private, like personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was great. So, so Gallery Z set up like this event for me well okay they were having an event and they were calling vendors and i was like how about a tarot card reader and she got really excited about that so and she she just like made it work for me and like and you were so I, you were popular you didn't have a break for even a few seconds I don't yeah think. oh i read like straight through the whole four hours it's incredible yeah. i know there's people waiting <laughs> we were waiting yeah, yeah like you were yeah you were the hit of the place yeah, that was, it was so cool, and like that was the first event like I've ever done something like that. So I was really grateful for that opportunity, and it was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Hopefully, many more. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> you know, I actually just received three new tarot decks. Oh, awesome! So maybe at the end of this, we could pull a card for you, or pull a couple cards if you want. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. I didn't, like, write down a whole ton of questions, but, I don't know. Okay, maybe I can ask one for you? Yeah. What was, like, do you have anything in mind, or, like, any events, or, like, why, like, what started you down, like, a path of, like, like, opening up and self-healing and spirituality and stuff like that? Hmm. Was it a singular event, or, like, just evolving over time? There were a lot of, a lot of little things. Um... I feel like I will answer your question. I do want to do like a full episode where I talk a lot about this stuff, but to to answer you, um, I feel like there are a lot of little things that led me up to being open to um, spiritual involvement. Um, I would say like when I first kind of became aware of the concept, I was drawn to it. Um, but before that, jeez, Timmy, you okay? <laughs> so before I even like was really aware of like spiritual, or not really aware, like interested, I guess, in spirituality, um, I, like in my early 20s, I kind of became like I would consider myself like a agnostic atheist kind of like a little bit of both because like I I was 
I grew up Catholic, Christian Catholic, and um, I actually kind of um, got, I wasn't interested growing up with it, but like when I did like a retreat when I was um, like 15, 16, because you had to do a retreat to get confirmed. Yep, I did as the Catholic. same thing, all of it, yeah. <laughs> so I went to this retreat where like I ended up meeting a lot of people and I like had a really fun time and I kind of got like wrapped up in the, um, in, that as an experience and like wanting more experiences like that i think it was because like i really liked the sense of like community and just like welcoming people without judgment and just like feeling like belonging and feeling like you're part of something that's like positive and so i actually kept doing retreats like that for like a few years after but then, like, after a while, it just, like, the the whole religious part of it kind of just, like, got stale for me, I guess, in a sense. And I just, it was not resonating for me anymore. And my brother was studying philosophy. He was taking a philosophy class at UMass. And um, he, like, I don't know, he, like, got really into it, so he just, like, ordered like the first philosophy book that he found which was Ayn Rand I don't know if you know her mm -hmm. she's actually really cool um she talks about um it, she's very like reason like reason is her like um her big thing and she talks about like uh, you know I don't she doesn't believe in any gods and we, you know, she has a book called, like, The Virtue of Selfishness, so it's kind of just like, you know, you stay in your own lane, you focus on yourself, and you don't hold anyone else responsible for your well, well-being or whatever, which I can resonate with, like, you know, I feel like every individual is kind of responsible for their own, um, from now, from my now perspective, like, vibration. Everybody's responsible for their own vibration and attraction, what they attract to themselves. Um, and I have done a lot of like learning into that kind of concept. So I feel pretty confident in my belief in that now. So anyway, whenever I like learned about Ayn Rand and like I was had kind of had this camaraderie with my brother then and we were like, yeah, there's no like church is kind of like, hmm what's the word, like, corrupted and, like, government's corrupted and all this stuff, and we didn't want any part of it. <laughs> and so we were like, okay, there's no God, or whatever. We, I wasn't really sure. I still kind of, like, didn't really know back then, but because I believed in God before that, but I was like, okay, if there's no God, then I... And that was when I was, like, what, 22 or something. And then between then and when I probably in my 30s um I would have just considered myself like an atheist agnostic and I had a few experiences um one like like really kind of profound experience was when I had I was eating like weed edibles <laughs> and um around that time like whenever I smoked or or ate edibles I would end up just the, in this like downward spiral of like depressing like sad thoughts and I would be mm. like yeah because like I'm in my 30s like I don't have a boyfriend like I'm not my life isn't going anywhere and I would just be like this is life this is really depressing like <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I got really down on myself and this one time that I was high and I was just like laying in bed trying to fall asleep I had this kind of like really sad thought and I've talked about this a little bit before, I think, like, on my stream or something. But I had this thought that, like, because, like, my thoughts were just ru running. And I had this sudden thought and, like, a realization back then, I thought, um, that, like, wow, all of these voices in my head is all just me. And I'm just here alone. And there's no one else. Like, no one else is here with me. I'm just alone and I that just like 
hit the pit of my stomach like really hard and it hurt and I probably cried myself to sleep that mm -hmm. night and I still feel sad when I think back on that but it's from like a whole new perspective because now like I would say that was like 2018 2017 um now like five years later I've I've learned so much I've opened up so much and I feel quite certain that I'm not alone like I am me this is my human form Kim and I have a soul which is comes from source and I believe that I am connected to source connected to the all that is and I believe that I have spirit guides I have like angels that communicate with me and I feel like they've been there all along and um, yeah, I, I keep doing more and more work to like try and connect with them and bring them in to connect with me. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I guess that's kind of part of it. That's like this, that's kind of like part of the early dark night of the soul stuff that got me, mm -hmm. got me questioning and got me expanding. And there was also another really like way bigger dark night of the soul in like 2020 2021 i had like some really hard times that year um there are so many things that like brought me into this space of like total like hopelessness and like i don't know like like i used to think that i love myself and I loved my life and I was having fun but like at like in those times it was like wow I've just like wasted my life I've like wasted all this time like I feel like I have nothing to show for my life but like after like it was very gradual but like I kind of started like opening up to new things like I would say like the first um like thing that came to me and I know it was guided was that I started seeing um, on YouTube uh, videos of Abraham Hicks which is like a channeled um, a channeled entity um, and what they say just like resonated a lot and they were talking about like law of attraction all that kind of stuff and I was like yeah this makes sense at first I was like mmm I don't know I need more and then I was just like listening to Abraham like constantly and I feel like that with that a lot of it like really opened my mind up to new things and then I just kept finding other things like mm -hmm. I found shadow work and I started working on myself and realizing that like you know excuse me this isn't just like I'm not just a broken human like I have these things that I don't like about myself, I can choose to face them head on and see like what what is the light side of that or like what is what can I do to like help that part of me like not be so uncontrollable or un un not able to like see it or look at it, I guess. Um and so there was just like so many things that was like very gradual for me. Yeah, um, that's that's like that's amazing like where you've come from. It's a lot like um a lot of evolution and gradual is you know a good thing mm -hmm. to get you where you are. Yeah. You did mention that like originally what brought you to like the church was having like that community. Mm -hmm. So finding like now you feel comfortable in like your spirituality and like where you are today what about the community side mm-hmm so I've had a lot of dreams and aspirations like since I've kind of been on my own um, especially after working at the cafe like I kind of have this I like I have a little bit of what I would say I know to be my purpose in life at this point like at this point I know it's my purpose like over time it was just like these little things that like 
were attractive to me. Like, I really like the sense of, like, there being, like, a calm atmosphere and, like, being able to welcome people into that. And I feel like there's some something, um, like, really, like, I think that I'm really called to do something like that. It might be with this, like, show. Um, or it could be something else. Like, like, I used to think, like, maybe I'll open up my own cafe someday. Or maybe even like last year i thought i was going to start um this new adventure it just didn't happen but um it just wasn't the right time i think um but i was talking with some people about opening up like a community center it wasn't gonna be specifically spiritual but like i could see myself doing something like that um i started this e or last year i started going to a spiritualist church which is like wow. a really cool community that i've gotten into right that's now. great yeah. that's wonderful i like that a lot yeah um so i don't know if you know i feel like i might end up getting more involved in that um but yeah i feel like just i really want to i i i think i see like the projection of like where this world is going at this point i know that there's a lot of changes happening and there's a lot of like turbulence right now um but i really i really truly believe that this um next like 20 30 50 years is bringing us into like the golden age of humanity and i feel like I have some part in ushering that in and that's something to do with like community and just inviting people making people feel like they're welcome like they belong here and yeah <laughs> just I like love that. opening the doors for people and you definitely have done that for me and I'm mm. sure many other people you do have that mm. about you you do mm. and I love how you said um like your purpose now like your purpose like now because that's so important because like your purpose has changed mm -hmm. like even day to day it can like so just like that's what I'm trying to think of as well not like having a big plan and achievements like what's now what's the purpose now mm -hmm. and like where to go from there but not like getting disappointed when you're not at other things like right now we find like purpose mm -hmm. and that's important i think yeah for sure yeah there's definitely like a magic to being in the moment and knowing like what is needed in this moment and just being comfortable in the moment i feel like <laughs> yes yeah, so, i'm kind of going off of that there's one thing um the holistic psychologist I love so much and I've listened to the podcast every single night and mm. they have books as well but like the podcast also kind of goes over the chapters of the book but I feel like that's helped shape me and, and like brought me you know, like aware of a lot of different stuff mm -hmm. um where was I going with this <laughs> about being in the moment <laughs> yes okay mm. yes so um like a self-loving practice and like something that I've been doing that they always recommend like throughout the day just stop for a second and ask yourself what do I need what do I need in the moment right now because mm. like you go the whole day and then like maybe then you think of oh I need oh I'm dehydrated or mm -hmm. like like <laughs> for me that happens a lot so yeah. like throughout the whole day like what do I need right now I need to sit for a minute I need to get outside I need mm. a glass of water and things like that I probably wouldn't have thought about if I wasn't like trying to be aware mm -hmm. but yeah in the moment mm. it's important yeah yeah, and that, that's the perfect practice to have to just, like, breathe and, like, think about that for a moment. Yeah. it's Yeah, it's really powerful just to yeah, take that time for a second and kind of think, what do I need? Mm -hmm. Or even just take that time for that breath. Mm -hmm. Finding that time. And it's really, put that, yeah, doing something for yourself mm -hmm. that can benefit the whole day, yeah. your whole being, really, over mm -hmm. time. Yeah, sometimes, like, at the coffee shop, it's just so hectic, and, like, at the end of the day, I realize, like, I haven't gone to the bathroom yes, all day. Yes, yes. I can well, imagine. Go. <laughs> yes, the lines, like, out the door. That's yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty crazy there sometimes. <laughs> in the heat of that moment, you probably don't have the time to even ask yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know? that's true. But, yeah, there's definitely... Yeah, sometimes you just get caught up in the, that momentum. Yes. But 
some like you know i feel like spirit always makes some room like there's some moment that comes to you in the day and that's your chance to be like okay <sighs> yeah. Yes. Mm. Yep. <laughs> that's great Center. and the more, the more you practice the more you can kind of i think the more those moments would come mm -hmm. think that I just have a few more like last questions um so I think these are questions that I'm going to be asking all my guests like towards the end of my show um what are you here for on earth to do wow that's powerful mm. That's really deep. Um, I guess, like, fully, I'm not sure. But in general, I feel like I'm here on Earth to, like, help somebody open their eyes and, like, um, learn or, like, grow in a way that they may have not. Mm -hmm. um, like, specifically, teaching has been a passion of mine and mm -hmm. seeing students who really want to understand but they have trouble or with learning disabilities mm -hmm. and seeing them like really understand it it like brings tears to my eyes it's, it's like just such a touching thing yeah. and it may not be teaching in general but I think having like some type of facilitation of somebody discovering something about themselves or something that they love mm -hmm. and like to me that's just fulfilling mm -hmm. so that's kind of where I'm at now of like what maybe my purpose in life is but I, that that's a really good question to kind of sit on and think about mm. like what else there's a lot of purposes that could could come around come away yeah do you want to talk any more about like your teaching and what you do what you were doing with that or yeah uh, so pretty much teaching has been like really the only thing I academics and and, and teaching has been the only thing I really loved and mm -hmm. chemistry tutor and and teaching <laughs> and biochemistry um, so I feel like the path I'm on right now, currently life, is like completely opposite of that. It's more just like mm -hmm. learning about myself, spirituality. It's not science driven at all. It's completely off of that. But I feel like it's kind of brought me to who I am. Mm -hmm. um, um, but yeah, teaching uh, laboratory specifically is really like has been one of the best passionate things in my life. Mm -hmm. um, before I started having children, that was really the path I went down. I think it, I really do think there is a teaching aspect calling for me. I feel it in me, like some type of teaching aspect mm. calling for me. Maybe it's through like writing textbooks. I don't really know, but I know that like science and continuing to teach that is something that I, I hope that is a path for me in the future. Mm, cool. Okay, so I just thought of another question I wanted to yeah, ask. So, so with your um like your science background and you kind of just recently started getting into spirituality so what was your like what were your kind of like belief system on that before you started opening up to it recently so yeah i've always been very science driven but i'm also like i also been like a spiritual emotional person as well like i'm not really hard science facts and nothing else like mm -hmm. that it you know like I've always had kind of two sides to myself. Like I've always been very science driven, but similar to you, I grew up like Catholic doing like the, the classes and like um, all that and the retreats and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that there's something bigger than myself, mm -hmm. even though I believed in science and I also believe like there's something so strong inside of me that's like needs this connection to something that like it's something's something's more mm -hmm. so like I wasn't resonating with like traditional religion kind of similar to you um so like right now I'm still kind of figuring out what I believe in but it's really been like mother nature really over the past few years mm -hmm. getting outside mother nature uh like looking into the ocean looking into the water mm -hmm. and just like I feel like it opens me up and it like grounds me mm -hmm. so like my, I, I feel like I'm connected to something much bigger than Mother Nature, and I kind of feel like that kind of brings like the sciency into me, mm. like. But yeah, figuring out what else, like there's some type of strong pull of like my soul mm. to connect somewhere, mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to learn, and I feel like a lot of everything I'm 
opening myself up to it's kind of bringing me down more paths of like learning more things what's out there so you know there's a lot that can be evolved with me but like uh, yeah just mother nature really is kind of like what I think is is pulling me and like connecting me to something bigger than myself because I I also kind of felt like more atheist for many years but I there's definitely something very strong inside that needs to that needs some type of like kind of in a spiritual outlet for me mm. as well so I kind of have both worlds um still trying to figure out that new spiritual world that I'm kind of entering now mm-hmm. but I've always been extremely like um emotional feeling my feelings very deep mm-hmm. and like connecting to like the earth and mother nature and stuff like that. just really being outside enjoying like trees water I feel like it's mm-hmm. it really speaks to me mm-hmm. I love that yeah nature is so healing yes it is yeah. <laughs> it really is mm-hmm. okay my other last questions then um what is your highest, brightest vision for the future without worrying about how to get there? Is this like my future or just in general the people? Mm, and You can do either one, either. But kind of like, yeah, the world future. Or like, well, or like you can feel free to mention your, your own. Okay, yeah, yeah, like in general, mm. what would be amazing and ideal for me, I don't know if we'd ever get there, is just really having everybody on this planet be like open-minded and compassionate Mm -hmm. like that's really I feel like that's all we really need if everyone just kind of cared generally about like each other there wouldn't really be much to worry about like people would take care of one another money would be spread evenly Mm -hmm. really just equal equal rights and like everyone getting on that same mindset of everybody deserves this exact same amount of love and respect yeah and I know like not many people have that mindset at least not the mass amount that needs to be to Mm -hmm. but I feel like as a whole if like everyone just had that like acceptance mindset Mm -hmm. that it would be a whole different planet like you know everything we do would be different Mm -hmm. it just I I don't think it it, it would never come there right because like there's Mm -hmm. such differences in opinions and in in a perfect world like I feel like that would be all it really needed Mm -hmm. to really environmentally change this and that everything will change if everyone just Mm -hmm. had some more empathy and acceptance Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i feel like it's possible i feel like you know the energy is shifting like people who weren't really open to this kind of stuff before like a lot of people are like opening up to change their views and like look inward on themselves and see like okay maybe i'm not perfect maybe there's something i need to work on and uh, so I kind of feel like I mean it's a big thing, but it like is, yeah, exactly. <laughs> At least like, getting a mo- like a m- more people on board. But like you said, like uh, it maybe it is like a movement. Like I feel I feel like I see other friends, other people who are kind of going on self healing journeys that I'm. I feel so like awesome. Like to mm. hear of, like the more I hear about it, the more like excited it. it, it and like I feel like the more. Um, people then can become aware of the more it's out there. So hopefully then with with time and spreading the word like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that was kind of my last big question. The other one is just like if there's anything you want to plug. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I'm sure there's some other things. Um, should I ask you some stuff? You can. And I'll bring the cards too if you okay. want. If you want to do cards, <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm learning. So yeah, I have a question for you. So okay. I'm currently like learning and going through, like doing a lot of um, like work, like daily affirmations um, have been like a really big help for me. And I started that maybe ten weeks ago, and mm-hmm. I feel and I feel like my whole presence is kind of changing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a few other things, deep breathing exercises that I do every single day to kind of calm my body. Mm-hmm. And I know earlier we were talking about, like, tapping technique. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something I've been interested in, but I haven't really looked much into it or practiced. Is there anything in specific that you practice daily or weekly that, like, journaling, meditation, like, what is your outlet for mm-hmm. grounding and stuff like that? Thank you. That's a really good question. Um, so, yeah, I sleep with the mat every night. I don't really know if that helps, but <laughs> I hope it does. 
Um, I recently started doing Wim Hof breathing, and I try to do it every single morning. Oh, okay. So I do, like, three rounds of breath. Um, some days, if I shower in the morning, I will, like, end my shower cold, like, thir- like 90 seconds. I try to do 90 seconds, like, cold. And that kind of just, like, I feel like that kind of resets my energy capacity for the day. Um, so, yeah, the Wim Hof stuff. And, and the breathing has been... For me, that's been, like, really, I think, physically healing, which is what my wow. focus is, has been on. And, okay. and, and I notice differences in, on specific things that I've been wanting to heal. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. going to have to look into that. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, it depends. Like, you really have to, like, be present with the breath. And, like, I, I notice things, like, f- specifically, for example, like when i do the out breath and i'm holding i have like tingling all i feel like all in like these blood vessels and nerve endings that are so like lack lacking stimulation over these years of just like not not doing anything special for them or whatever um but i feel like it's just like bringing more like life force energy like back into my body and like bringing me presently back into my body. Definitely, it sounds like a like a place for like mindfulness, even maybe a little bit of meditation, probably mm-hmm. like to connect with yourself. Mm-hmm. That's aw- very awesome. I'll have to yeah. Look into that. Yeah, I love it, and it does. Like I noticed that like when you do the breathing, and then like you sit for meditation right after it, it like makes it a lot easier for me to like get into a very quiet space. And on top of that, if I add humming, like I started humming sometimes, like, mm, yes, that really amplifies yes. it. I agree to uh, humming. It's something. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know much about it, but maybe it's. I think there's another thing that kind of just like brings resonant, vibrating energy yeah. into like the still, like meridians or, or even like physical parts of your body that are just not used to. They've just been not used like that i don't know i know it's interesting yeah so that's been great recently um i have done a lot of reading um some of my favorite books are right here like i love louise hay um you can heal your life oh yeah i've never heard of her oh she's amazing especially with uh, she's like i feel like she's like the godmother of affirmations okay i have to look into that yeah you can borrow this book. <laughs> um, I think Jackie has my other copy of that, actually. Um, yep. And she she kind of references, like, like in this one, she kind of has, she looks like a, this chart of, like, okay, so if you have, if you have gray hair, it's because you are stressed, you you have a belief in pressure and strain, and then this is the affirmation for like helping with it. She gives like all these different affirmations. Cool. If you want to know the affirmation for gray hair, it's I'm at peace and comfortable in every area of my life. I am strong and capable. I love that. Yeah, I love Louise. That's really good. Yeah, affirmations are so powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have. I haven't like honestly practiced a lot with affirmation, but I feel like just. Uh, like I become aware of that uh, of a lot of that stuff um and just becoming aware of those practices and like aware of your thoughts like yes. just making sure you're not attracting the opposite and like thinking negative thoughts yes, like, yes. Uh, that's what I try to stay on top of another one I really like is um Florence Scovelshin she's a little bit like Louise Hay she's like really good with affirmations especially like with abundance and stuff like that so I try to listen to her a lot great yeah I'll send you some some good references here yeah Yeah. (laughs) um and yeah journaling is something that has really helped me um kind of just like unload and express myself and just like hear myself I think yeah, hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. I, I'm not keeping up with it, but when I first started this journey, I would journal quite a bit, and that mm-hmm. it really like um, brought me like, whoa! I'm thinking this. Whoa! I did this. Yeah. Like I didn't know I was like so many things. Like as I journal mm. and then even read it back again and think mm-hmm. about it like another day, it's very powerful practice. Mm-hmm. It brings you 
a lot closer to like understanding yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I don't really hold it to my hold myself to it every day, but I it's just like whenever like something comes to me, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, gotta write that down. <laughs> yes, and they say um, like writing it physically with your hand is much more powerful than like typing it. Like I if you were to use your phone, mm-hmm. it's like um, kind of like studying too. Like they say to use your hand to write notes rather than mm. like typing them something about like it it wires in your brain differently mm. so writing mm. and journaling is very important practice but yeah it's hard to for me it's been hard to kind of um find the time sometimes i'm, I'm quickly jotting down things in my phone and mm-hmm. that's okay too though because mm. it still just um helps me become aware at that moment i don't want to forget about this one and make sure i'm like i'm having this big feeling and like let me jot down what's happening right now so mm. it, it's yeah it's pretty powerful stuff it's great that you that you do that yeah a lot of my journaling is done on my phone too like yeah. I, I just have like notes everywhere that yes exactly has, has same, yeah but that's okay like if that's what works you know because yeah i'm not gonna it's like the time that i want to journal i'm like it's like i'm in a situation like all of a sudden this emotion comes up like i don't have my journal mm-hmm. on me and but yeah getting it out there is important yeah and sometimes too, like I can't write fast enough. I agree. To like keep up with my thought process, so I'm like, so, or sometimes I just like record it. Yes, know, like yes, voice yes. record it. That's that a great idea. I have not too. done that, but I've I've read mm-hmm. that some people do that. Yeah, I can kind of. I think that's like second best to writing because you're kind of like mm-hmm. expressing. It's like um, talking about things. <laughs> for me, at least, talking about things, I, like I have a whole new perspective. I I feel like. Mm-hmm. You're talking helps, even if it's just to yourself, like just getting it out there. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I'll have to try doing the video recording, the uh, video mm-hmm. audio recording. That's that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, and uh, sometimes like when I meditate almost every day too. I try to meditate every day, like at least like ten minutes or something like that. That's sometimes, great. Sometimes I do more, but like sometimes when I sit to meditate, I turn on my voice recorder too. So like, mm. if I have anything that like is distracting me i can just like speak it out and be yes. like okay leave that for later or also like I, I try to connect sometimes too and like try to like bring my angels in to see like what do you what do you have to say for me or what do you want me to know right now or something yeah. that's <laughs> awesome yeah were you gonna say something no i'm not sure no oh, okay <laughs> I just kept going. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. No, no. It, it, hearing about other people's like <laughs> techniques and ways that coping, or it's so awesome. And I feel like anything I learn, it brings me closer to like under like doing you know, bettering myself, applying different things, or even if I don't ever get into tapping, just understanding that there's techniques out there like this and how mm-hmm. powerful like, the mind and body connection and stuff like that is. That really solidifies it. Mm-hmm. Very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, physical stuff, too. Um, there's a chiropractor I really like. I like to see him sometimes, so that helps me a lot, personally. Um, and I also try to do yoga. I try to do it every day, but it doesn't always happen. It's, like, whenever I... Like, I did it this morning. I, like, I follow this girl, um, Yoga with Cassandra, on YouTube, and she had, like, a grounding, uh, like, an earth element yoga flow this morning that I did so that was really good for today <laughs> to like ground <laughs> That's great. although I was still like nervous but it, it de- I think it definitely helped a lot with like like okay gotta like make sure everything's good and comfy in here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh that's great <laughs> yeah you seem very in tune with yourself mm. thanks <laughs> I definitely it, it's definitely like keeping up with the regular practice is something that's really important for me yes. like I've come to know because like when I don't and like sometimes I'll like get in a I'll just get in this like you know pattern of not a pattern but like just like the staleness or like I haven't cleaned up after myself for like a couple of days and like it just feels like chaotic in here I'm like I need to I need to like make this place clear clear the energy so that um i can like clear my head it's like the same kind of thing it's like if this place is not clear my head is not clear and i get stressed out (laughs) no the environment is a huge player in your mental health it really is Mm -hmm. yeah i really and i really feel that like 
as a passion too. I feel like, like I love decorating. I love like setting a vibe. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, your tarot card reading booth was gorgeous. I was like blown away by that. It was yeah. like a, it was gorgeous. It was like a professionally done all. Like, All the stuff on the table was mine, but, like, she set up those curtains for oh, me. Oh, that was so nice. Yeah, the curtains just, like, made it. They really me. did. It was, like, your own... Yeah. yeah, it was, like, bringing out the crystal ball. It was so, like, awesome. It was perfect. It felt so special in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna... Cl I'm gonna bring the cards over, but I'm gonna close this now, so I'm just gonna say thank you so much, Emily, for being my guest on my show. It was, like really fun chatting with you and like getting to know you because like i haven't really had the chance yet but um i'm so glad we got to talk now and i'm really i'm so like grateful to you for like just feeling comfortable and and just like bringing your presence here and sharing with me and with my viewers so thank you so much kim honestly <laughs> like i appreciate you like having me here and finding mm -hmm. another like like a minded person to connect with and be vulnerable and talk mm. to that's like very special because mm. I don't really have that much in my life and I feel like um you're like a you're meant to be in my life for some reason even if it's a bridge to connect me some other way mm. to other people or other like spiritual paths but uh, I feel like um this is meant to be I and think so too. I really appreciate you having me here it feels good to talk tell my story and hopefully find other like minded people Oh, all right. Thank you for viewing this episode and see you next time. so much for watching this episode if you're not already please remember to like this video and subscribe to support this channel keep up with me to be notified of bonus content when it becomes available including tarot readings for my guests opening ceremonies breathing exercises and more including the incredible breath 101 practice with Karina Karjan You, I feel like you're very in tune with yourself. Did I already say that today? It Babe. takes a lot of work. I think I, I honestly, I've been kind of obsessing over it, mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm. past, past year, I would say. Hard to hear that. That that was like a really hard moment for me. It really hurt mm -hmm. for him to say that to me. Souls incarnating now are, they're, they're on a whole new level. I agree. They're, our nature itself has been suppressed. Everybody's doing the work. Everybody's pulling out those shadows. We need to start welcoming everybody's shadow, everybody's everything. Practicing forgiveness is a huge part of that.